Mihoyo has decided to reveal Goro's entire kit through his hangout event, and while this activity by itself is pretty cute when trying to work on Goro's social skills, today I'm gonna take a look at his actual skills and show you just how busted he is going to be for certain teams. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Dungeon Fighter Online. I'm sure you've heard about this old-school beat-em-up online game that has been chosen by over 700 million players worldwide. Right now, the game is celebrating the release of Spectre, which is a new advancement class that looks pretty awesome and uses fast and deadly skills to beat up her enemies. And you can easily max out this new advancement by participating in the Song of the Spectre event, which will award you with best and rarest type of mythic gear so you can deck out your new Spectre. There's also an extremely generous Newbies Always Welcome event happening right now, which will provide generous rewards for new players who team up with veterans so everyone can benefit from each other. And what's even better, you can use my special coupon code shown here to unlock a cute dragon warrior companion, so make sure to use the link in the description or pinned comment to help support my channel and check out Dungeon Fighter Online. So let's start with the most crucial thing about him. Yes, he's absolutely a niche unit that only works best for defense scaling Geo teammates, and maybe in the future when more characters roll out with talents that scale with defense, he could also be a great partner for them. Now, the first thing that defines everything about him is his elemental skill, because this will be the biggest source of damage boost you can provide for his teammates, and as it was mentioned in the livestream preview, the more Geo characters are in the comp, the better the effects will be. And basically, even if he's just by himself, he still counts as one Geo character, so he will always provide defense boost by default, which is a sizable chunk of 392 at level 11. But even without the skills constellation, you can still expect this to be around 330 at level 8, so that's pretty impressive by itself. With this boost alone, you can immediately notice the changes to someone like Albedo's bloom damage or Noel's burst attack, but things only start to get better from here because with two Geo teammates, now you get better resistance to interruption, so less time spent getting getting knocked around if you fail to dodge, and you can focus on just dishing out everyone's rotation. But the skill reaches its ultimate form when there's 3 Geo characters, as it will now provide 15% Geo damage boost, so everyone's basically getting a free Archaic Petra 2 set bonus on top of the defense boost. And the best part about all of this? The skill lasts for 10 seconds, and the cooldown ends after 10 seconds. So with careful management, you can always use the skill without any downtime, but on the other hand, while the boosts he provides are awesome, the skill itself self deals lackluster damage and only generates somewhere between 1 to 2 particles. Now the damage might become way more better once we can put in him the newest Husk of Opulent Dreams Artifact 4 set, since the one he's wearing from the trial version is Noblesse Oblige, which is decent enough, but he can clearly attack enemies in a wide AoE just with the skill alone, so exploring his damage capabilities once he's out will be a huge priority, because one of his passive talents actually provides him with additional scaling from his defense for both his skill and burst. And speaking of which, if if the skill defines Goro's core capabilities, then you're not gonna believe what Mihoyo has done with his burst. While it was known for some time now that the burst is going to be his elemental skill on steroids that you can carry around instead of setting it on the ground, the most shocking reveal has to be its ability to pull in crystallized shards every 1.5 seconds. That's right, no more running around and picking up these shards because as long as the burst is active, they are going to get vacuumed inside the burst radius. And it's great because when facing off against enemies with elemental auras, it will act as a pseudo shield generator, although don't expect to absorb that much damage, as this function functionality is more than likely going to serve a purpose for you to have better uptime with Geo Resonance bonus. This also legitimately might be the first time an Archaic Petra force set will become an easy to use option on a character who can actually pick up the shard the moment the burst is used, but at the same time, this is probably only relevant for elemental damage teams, and seeing how right now Goro is exceptional for mono Geo comp, well, only time will tell. Still, let's circle back to the topic of energy, since his burst costs 80 and he only generates a couple of particles, so this might prove to be troublesome if he wants to do the burst off cooldown, although since he will be used in Mono Geo teams, it's likely this won't be such a huge issue, but the Favonius bow he has on his trial version is actually a decent choice for him, since if you use a team like Goro, Noel, and Albedo, those extra particles, especially for Noel, are going to be quite relevant. Finally, to end all of this information overload, the actual reason why it's going 
going to be crucial to use his burst off cooldown is because of the second passive, which will grant 25% additional defense to everyone for 12 seconds, essentially turbo boosting everyone's damage even further. Like, it gets so ridiculous that Albedo, who still doesn't have Cinnabar Spindle and is equipped with the new Husk Artifact Force Set, goes from 12,000 bloom damage without any boosts to 18,000 when Goro's burst is active, and then all the way to 22,000 if Geo Resonance is activated by having a shield on him. In fact, you can get an even bigger number if you use Zhongli's shield. To put it simply, these results alone with only trial equipment already reveals just how insane Goro is going to be for the Mono Geo teams, but there is something that needs to be seriously considered after hyping up this furry commander so much. Look, before we start calling Goro the next Geo Bennett, it's important to examine everything we've learned so far about him. And while it's true from a first impression, he provides incredible damage boosting capabilities to defense scaling Geo teammates, which already sounds like a mouthful, so to put it in the most simple terms possible, he is so far only going to matter for those people who actually want to build a mono Geo team. And I'm not even talking about this from a meta perspective, since we cannot use him in the Abyss, but literally everything about him makes it look like he is just just a piece of a big puzzle, because if we assume you want to use the new husk 4 piece set on him, or even just the 2 pieces, if there's also someone like Albedo and Ito in the team, they are more than likely going to want the same artifact pieces, which means you're going to spend the rest of your months inside one domain hoping something good will drop, unless of course you have godlike luck. But okay, maybe things can be moved around, instead he now uses Noblesse 4 piece, so everyone's burst, defense and geo damage increases, yet there is still the the whole thing about dedicating yourself to one element. Geo, for the most part, has been considered to be one of the weakest elements in theory crafting community, which you think it was Electro, but in reality, this element at least offers decent reactions like Superconduct and Electro Charge. So now that Mihoyo is planning to release Goro, it makes you question how crucial he is going to be if you want to actually play without him when using Ito, Albedo or Noel, because at the end of the day, you won't be getting him for free, Primo Gems are needed to be spent, and prayers have to be made to the RNG gods. What if you don't pull him and only get Ito? Will Ito be incomplete without Goro? It's obviously too early to speculate, but it is kind of interesting to see just how crucial he is going to be to the overall Mono Geo team comp strategy. And well, some of this does get partially answered if we take a look at these constellations. And starting with the first one, it's a pretty simple improvement that shaves off 2 seconds from his elemental skill if anybody inside the radius of his burst or skill deal Geo damage, so it just basically helps you with redeploying the banner slightly faster if enemies run out of its range. Now, things get more serious with the second constellation, because remember how his burst is able to suck in those shards inside its own field? Well, now, after picking up the shard, you can extend the burst duration by up to 3 seconds, which means better overall damage performance, so this is already a pretty huge improvement for him, but imagine what's coming up next. That's right, Goro at 4th constellation literally becomes Benny by gaining the ability to heal with his burst every 1.5 seconds, if there's at least two Geo characters in the comp, although I would say from initial calculations done so far, it's not going to be anything near as good as Bennett's insane healing, but you gotta admire the fact Mihoyo is even giving Goro a minor healing ability. Finally, here's when things go absolutely nuts, when you unlock his last constellation, as it will now provide up to 40% additional critical damage boost after using his skill or burst, essentially copying and pasting what was already achievable on Kujo Sara's last constellation, but it's even better here because the duration is 12 seconds, giving everyone plenty of time to go berserk with Geo damage. So after seeing all of this, it's pretty much clear just how busted he's going to be at his final constellation for someone like Ito and Noel, since that massive Geo crit damage boost, along with every other bonus he provides, is going to cement Mono Geo as a serious team. Well, probably, assuming Ito's damage multipliers are going to be strong, but honestly, even at C0, Goro looks like he's going to be pretty essential for team builds if you care about big damage numbers and synergies. Overall, thanks to this trial run that you can check out for yourself by choosing this breakpoint in his hangout event, it will hopefully convince you that he's pretty much an insane support unit and unlike previous niche characters like Kujo Sara or Toma, Mihoyo has actually gone even further by giving him the ability to provide team-wide buffs, but only for certain types of characters. It's kind of interesting to see this sort of a development happening in the game after more than a year has passed, since previously a lot of people used to expect that when a new character gets released, it has to be universal 
universally strong in all aspects, but seeing how the recent newest 4 stars are getting the niche treatment, Goro has to be the ultimate culmination of everything that has been leading up to this point so far. Of course, there is a small caveat since this is only happening to 4 stars, because from all the recently featured 5 stars, they aren't really doing one specific thing, and instead a lot of new teams have been made thanks to them, but in Goro's case, he is more than likely going to be the heart of every model Geo comp, with the obvious disclaimer being here that you need to actually care about synergy. There's still a lot of things that haven't been answered about this cute war general's potential, like what sort of damage output we can expect from him, if he's actually built with his best in slot artifacts set, and just how well will he carry the mono geo in places like the spiral abyss. One thing is clear, the bait has been set for whales and his final constellation is going to seduce many of them, but otherwise, his support capabilities so far look impressive enough even at C0, and hopefully once he gets released we can quickly discover everything there is to know about this furry fellow. Thanks for watching the video and see you soon.